course, this meeting recording has started. Okay, so this is our first slide deck. Gentlemen, let me start again because I think the uh, recording has started. This is our new slide deck and this is our uh, title, Helping Contact Center Excel Throughout the Customer Journey. And uh, our offerings are summarized uh, from a solution perspective as conversational AI solutions. So we are a conversational company and uh, now you're seeing our first, uh, our vision. This is the new vision statement bringing together AI-powered conversational solutions with high-tech consultancy, we lead the digital transformation of customer experience. So I want to highlight a couple of uh, words in this uh, vision statement, because they, they, they really have an essence. This is not just like a wording. Um, actually, for any type of offering from any, any type of vendors to be successful in the conversational AI domain, I think you need two, two elements. One powerful technology, second, high-touch consultancy. What do, what do we mean by high-touch consultancy? Actually, um, at certain points, the design and bringing together the components of AI becomes more important than AI itself. And sometimes you can find multiple AI components in the market, and sometimes in the environments that we deploy our products, they already have certain AI components. You can always do things in the modular mode. I mean, maybe, for example, they might have some voice biometrics technology. You might be integrating with their current technology. So it doesn't really matter. The way you bring things together and the way you understand the customer requirements and then fine tune. And if you observe the way we pitched our solutions to our customers together, you will hear a lot of words like fine tuning, calibration, tailoring. Uh, these words are coming out of experience, which is now uh, this year's 20 years of experience of uh, Sestec company. Because what we have observed in the global market is, no matter how strong technology you have, unless you touch the locality, unless you touch the requirements of that specific customer, actually we even don't say region or territory, because for example, my territory is Middle East and North Africa and Asia Pacific, it's a bit white territory for me now, but Let's say golf is my primary focus, but golf is not the main level of analysis. Yeah, you should go down to countries, Dubai or like uh, UAE, maybe uh, Saudi, Jordan, Lebanon, but still not enough. You should go down to the level of customers. So each customer, when it's come to the conversational domain, which is a very personalized type of experience, it's about conversation. And like human beings, people have languages, but they also have accents. They also have Idiolects, I mean, each customer has its own universe of conversation. So that's why we emphasize high-touch consultancy a lot. And that's honestly, if you ask me, the first thing that differentiates Sestec is high-touch consultancy together with the strength of the technology. Actually, our technology is fit for high-touch consultancy. Unless you have the organizational alignment for high-touch consultancy, uh, you have to impose domain generic models and technologies to the customer and that's one of the very core root reasons why some of the big projects failed. Uh, not with us, uh, thankfully, but uh, this is one of the core reasons. You have to touch the customer, you have to understand the specific requirement. That's why, honestly, uh, the pre-sales process is very important when it comes to conversational AI technology. I have to emphasize this, and we are getting great help from you guys. Hamza Ahmed and the team, I mean, they know how complicated things are, and the Avaya India team. Um, the statement of work documentations, I think for Minister of Interior, how many weeks we spent just to bring together the you know statement of work. Yes, there's some work there, but it's getting faster and faster because we are getting more experience. We know what type of details are important, and we are trying to do it as good as possible in the pre-CSP so, so that when we start the project, uh, we don't risk any type of uh, dissatisfaction. So uh, this was an explanation of our vision, but just to... Uh, speak uh, the vision again, bringing together AI-powered conversational solutions with high-touch consultancy. We lead the digital transformation of customer experience. So there are a lot of things to say about that. So as this is a more sales and marketing oriented session, I have to say, actually maybe this slide will help me here. So uh, the pandemic pandemic is quite, you know, uh, part of our lives now. So the new normal thing, and the, the, the discourse around that, even like in each uh, customer meeting, it starts with a couple of minutes of reviewing how, is, how, how it is like to live in this new normal. 
But actually, one of the outcomes of this new normal is increase in automation. And uh, what we have observed at SESTEC during this pandemic period is, uh, I, I would rather say our the requirement around te automation technologies almost like increased by 50, 60 percent. And one of the core reasons is, I mean, actually, there are a lot of core reasons around that. But actually, uh, the pand pandemic became a catalyst for automation agenda, let's say, because automation is inevitable. I think automation started with the first weaving machines and you know steaming engines, and it changed a lot of things in the world. Now it's the new industrial revolution. This is the AI part now, but this is the same continuation. So uh, you should see it as in inevitable. And uh, the good part is automation is not that safe forward. So it requires a lot of domain know-how, which Avaya has. And one of the things I always emphasize when we approach customers together with Avaya is we and Avaya, we are not just bringing you the technology, which is uh, best of breed, but we're also bringing you a lot of years of experience and we are doing it more like a consultative selling because it's not that straightforward. So I'm not going to go into the, that part because it's getting a bit technical when I start explaining why automation is not that straightforward. It's not like either having automation or not having automation. It's a, it's a blend of these. Two. So uh, the new uh, concept we have is like, it's more like a blended type of AI. So it's like a hybrid model. You have man, machine, and you have both of it in the gray area, let's say. But I'm not going to go into that. Maybe in the last part of my conversation, if you have uh, no other questions, I will highlight some of these things because they really help during the selling process. Because, you know, when you approach the customers, one of the key messages we need to give to the customers is, look, this is a long-term journey. Don't take it like a simple quick win because that quick win become, can become a big loss in, in, in the three, four years' time. So you have a chatbot here, yeah, that's cheap, and I did it, blah, blah, and it's working, look, but you don't know how it's going to expand. When you come to the next phase, when your competitors do better and better, and you cannot do better and better because you didn't uh, calculate for that, then it will become a big headache for you. And I'll try to explain why Sestec is really a potential uh, for the long-term partnership rather than a, a short-term win. But of course, this is also something that we can also discuss how to pitch the first uh, first step, which is smaller, but we need to convince the customer when we tell a very big story, maybe it will frustrate the customer. There is a balance there. And I also need your uh, you know, expertise on that and experience on that about how to balance these two things. Because sometimes uh, I also observe that the long-term vision can overwhelm the customer. That's another subject to speak about. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, how is my pace? Just, just to double check, I mean, is the pace okay, uh, Nora? Guys, is it okay? So, am I too fast? Yeah. Like, is good? You're, you're good, Nora. Okay. You're good. All okay, fine. Thank you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let me continue like that. Okay. Okay. The value proposition. So, what is the pain point? Let's let's understand this. So, actually, automation is a big thing. I mean, this this is what changed the world for the last couple of centuries. So uh, it's the difference between weaving machine and uh, doing it like manually. Of course, there's a big advantage. And the core of the story is actually, guys, efficiency. So it's all about money. So um, when you do automation, even like the, the pandemic uh, you know, rates are showing this. I mean, if you do 15% uh, of your services as automation, you're going to save a lot of money. That's, that's as simple as it is. So one of my co customers who has uh, a chatbot and the conversational IVR uh, from Sestec, uh, they used to have 7,000 sessions per month with eight agents. Now they're having 20,000 sessions per month with eight agents. So they didn't increase the number of agents even by one people, one person, but they tripled their workforce, uh, workload, excuse me. So workforce here, workload here now. I mean, previously it was like this. So of course you're saving those, uh, you know, people. You're almost saving uh, 15 people. Saving 15 people is very uh, appealing to everyone. But what is the cost of saving 15 people? Are you compromising the customer experience? That's the key part. So you can do efficiency, but you can have um, churn. You can save money, but you can have dissatisfied customers. You can have efficiency, but you can stop having more conversions. So you can lose money. I mean, it's like, like a pool problem, you know. So, you're filling here and something is being discharged here. So 
to avoid that, that's why uh, we are trying to uh, target a uh, type of automation which will not compromise the experience. So that's the part that requires more brain power and uh, more experience. And another part of uh, automation is also uh, uh, related to consistency and speed. Uh, consistency comes from the fact that once you set up very strong scripts or procedures or processes, it will always give you consistently accurate results. So you don't need to worry about training the system like the way you train your agents. So this is the biggest appeal, especially during the pandemic. This part became more important because suddenly the conditions, circumstances changed radically and people had to do a lot of displacement. People like started working home, this and that. That chaos broke all their standard ways of management and they couldn't adapt to it. An experience from my past, when I was leading the MIS department in the Turk Telecom's large uh, uh, call center, and I was using AWS systems, by the way. I know your CMS, you know, data items in the CMS. We were dealing with all the planning and reporting, these type of stuff. Um, you know, one day, uh, the operations manager called me and said, uh, Ahmed, uh, what, you know what happened? I asked what happened. You know, he said, there was an eruption uh, in Iceland. I was asking, you know, I think she went nuts, you know, like, uh, you know, she was working under pressure and I thought, you know, like, I, okay, this is the breaking point for her. Um, so it was like a joke. Uh, but yeah, it turned out to be that the, 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 the mount called like Jajajaku, it exploded. And at that day, I remember Turkish Airlines customers were waiting in the queue for more than one hour. And before that, when there was like a, a 40 seconds of uh, waiting time, uh, Turkish Airlines were calling us, oh, my customers are waiting, you know, blah, blah. And now it was one hour. So in these type of conditions, it's very difficult to scale up. And it's even if you like scale up the training people and bringing together the resources, but it's very easy to increase the number of licenses. Plus, there is, a, there is always a, like, a, you know, turnover in the contact centers. But when you have the automation systems, you don't need to worry about turnover as well, because you don't need to train the new guys. So it's already trained. But the thing is, how strong and solid is your you know, database, as well as uh, the processes around that? If you do it right, then it gives, it introduces a big efficiency and speed to you. It's efficient, consistent. And if you have the right design, right understanding of the customer journey, right infrastructure like Avaya, because it's always like a blend. You should have the right agent desktop. You should have the right routing algorithm. You should know when to route the agent. If you can combine these two rights, honestly, it's really an inevitable big wave coming. Guys, it's a tsunami. I mean, can, no, no one can avoid this. So I think the strength of this partnership is very, very important. So this is the value proposition, basically. But what is the technology itself? How do we name it? So this is our new a way of presentation, the solution suites, we call it triple A. So we, we are a basically a conversational company. So we do conversational AI stuff. But there are three groups of solutions under that. They're called conversational automation, conversational authentication, and conversational analytics, the triple A's. So yeah, so what do we do basically? On the service stage, you can do the automation. So how can contact centers increase the range and the rate of self-services they provide? But it's not just increasing the number of self-services. For example, on the DTMF, you can still do a lot of self-service, right? But when you combine DTMF with speech interface with the NLP, as we do, uh, for example, Bank Moscat, we offered something like that. Uh, when you do that, the self-service rates will increase for a couple of reasons. One, uh, for example, you can introduce alphanumerics, which you cannot do on the DTMF. Second, you're using most natural interface, which is speech. It will increase the customer ease of interaction because when you go into the DTMF maze, sometimes you get lost in it and you want to get rid of it quickly. So you are trying to find shortcuts, which is always a big issue for the customers. And I'm one of those customers, to be honest. I always try to find the zero that will connect me directly to the agent. So I'm one of those naughty customers that really doesn't like going through steps. And I always, I, I mostly get lost. Although I'm coming from a contact center background, I still didn't learn how to find the right spot if it is not a simple IVR. So I, I'm very infamous about that. But when it's a speech, you basically speak with it. And one of the catchphrases you can use against your customers is when you speak about conversational AI solutions, they will say, you know, for 
yeah, now they don't say it anymore, honestly. The culture changed a bit because of the pandemic. But now, previously, I was hearing these type of things a lot. Other people don't like interacting with machines. They like interacting it with the human beings. So did, did, you, did any one of you hear about that, something like that? Did you get any such feedback? So our customers don't like interacting with people. They like interacting with, excuse me, they, our customers don't like interacting with machines. Culturally, they want to talk with someone. Did you hear about that? Eddie, for example, or is it doesn't sound, sound familiar to you? It's very, it is actually very common, especially in our region. But I think that there is a shift. Uh, you know, the more uh, big banks and uh, are adopting this kind of technology, you can feel that the people are easing into it. Correct. Uh, and one more thing, just a, just a very uh, simple trick for you guys. You can say something very strong. You can tell them, look, uh, I found this catchword, by the way. Uh, you can say, guys, we are not automating your interaction. We are actually humanizing it. Why? Because you're already interacting with the DTMF, right? And DTMF is a machine. I mean, if I'm after self-services, which is already the case, I know a bank in Saudi, they have 95% self-services on the IVR. But you don't know, you know what type of suffering their customers are going through, and no one tells me about that. And I'm sure it's, it must be very painful, yeah. So they still don't know how many people are going to branches because of this very boring type of self-service. I don't know how, could, uh, how they could do it, that's their claim. But there's another side of the story, right? But what I'm trying to say is, you already have a DTMF. In the worst case scenario, you have a DTMF for routing people, right? Actually, we are humanizing that. One of the reasons why this bank in UAE, they love this technology is, you know, their customers are simply saying what they want to do. And when you do the fine tuning and do the enhancements, it gets better and better. And after a certain accuracy, then you start getting very good feedback from the customers. Plus, actually, for any type of customers who resist technology, who don't believe in that tech, or who doesn't feel, okay, maybe they loved the DTMF, they can still take the, this option. You can also offer this option. For example, one of our customers, BNP Paribas, Turkey, they gave it as an option to the customer. You want to go with conversational, uh, you know, IVR or you want to go with good old IVR and they're saying and they're making their own preferences and this preference is stored in the database and next time they call they're just picking up whatever they want to do and I think it was around 95% that they selected conversational IVR plus uh, if you also introduce authentication and other steps it also becomes more like you know and I'm, by the way, I'm skipping totally the, uh, you know, the cultural aspect of it. For example, nowadays for the last couple of years, automation, bots, robots, Sophia robot, this and that, it became like a big excitement, especially in the young people. There is an appealing aspect of it, which is not related to the convenience. It's more about the image, like doing some interaction with a bot. I'm not telling about the marketing aspect of it, just from the user experience perspective. I mean, you can always say, look, what we are doing is actually, for the IVR part I'm saying, humanizing the technology yes we are automating to a certain degree but actually there's already the automation imagine even on the chatbot you can always have a visual IVR, right you can do selections tick 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 but rather than selections doing five six selections like a visual IVR, you can just simply say what you want to do i'd like to transfer 300 dollars uh to my wife to my current account tomorrow that's it rather than just clicking this clicking that clicking this click or just mobile applications alike you you already have automation in your life uh, like cars themselves, why, why do all the big car uh, companies are investing in conversational technology? Because they want people, they want people to speak with their cars. Like this, you know, Michael Knight thing, you know, this like kit uh, car, you know, where you speak with it. But th th there is already a, a big appeal for it because we're humanizing the technology. So that, that's something that you can use and that changes their perspective. Uh, by the way, I'm, I'm purely focusing on the marketing aspects. So uh, these are the things that uh, I, I speak with my customers to convince them uh, about this technology. But of course, again, the core of the conversation is always automation, efficiency. And then I would say the second part is consistency. And then the question mark, how about the customer experience? And when you start telling these things, then it gives them further confidence. But of course, this part is, I think, the heart of it, very important. And this is where you can get very strong, uh, ch uh, challenging questions from the customers. And I think everyone should be ready for that. And I will mention them briefly within my presentation. But I hope you liked our new narration, automate, authenticate, and analyze. So the triple A's, this is the, 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 these are the stages 
that we conversationalize the customer journey with Avaya. By the way, guys, any type of technology we have, we need Avaya everywhere. So when I'm saying we will replace DTMF, actually, we cannot function without DTMF. So any type of technology we have, we have to have the Avaya component there. So there is no way we can replace the DTMF fiber because our, we, ours is just an integration with DTMF fiber. Actually, we are just replacing the finger. We are not replacing the DTMF fiber. Rather than pressing one, you are saying something, and it's converted to one, and that word presses one. Actually, that's that's the part we change. So uh, that's why uh, Avaya and Sestek is just one part of the same offering. Okay, so let me let me just check my time. I think it's already uh, yeah. 15 minutes, let me just, uh, okay, start with the conversational AI part of it. Because, you know, uh, we spoke about three A's, authentication, uh, excuse me, automation, authentication, analyze. The analyze part is, you know, uh, you have certain alternative vendors in your in your own suite. So I will skip that part and I'll focus on automation, authentication, which is the core of our partnership. Uh, but let me start with conversational AI. Okay, one of the key things I emphasize strongly when it comes to conversation AI is sometimes I start with like a dramatic sentence like for example if the customer is looking for a chatbot I say look guys we are not a chatbot company if you are looking for a chatbot company it's not us why I'm saying this because chatbot became a commodity and it's very shallow I mean it's not the it's not what we think about when we think about statistic products we don't think about that simple chatbot you see here and there Actually, what we are providing is, let me see whether, yeah, it will come later. What we mean by conversational AI platform is it's an omni-channel, multi-modal, and multilingual conversational AI platform, which means chatbot for us is just an implementation of conversational AI on one simple channel, which is text-based channel. But the same platform itself can run on any channel. It, it can run as a virtual assistant on an application. It can run on the IVR. These are for us just the integration endpoints, the, 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 the channel integrations. So why do I emphasize that? Because, for example, there was, there was a big RFP in, uh, in Saudi, and I was competing against some other chatbot companies. And at a certain point, I told the, the, the company, and we started that project, by the way, we won it with this method. I told them, look, we are not selling you a chatbot. Whatever you have now, it will be a virtual assistant because it also has the speech components and it has a back end, uh, it has an orchestration layer which can integrate with multiple channels, uh, excuse me, multiple backend systems, and it will be centralized. Meaning, tomorrow, if you want to use the same services on the idea, it will be just an integration for you. And when I did that, uh, the competition got lost because no one, no one else could do that with us. And I even realized that one of the very big vendors in the market, like the you know the global leaders in the market they even don't have it what they lack is an orchestration layer which is centralized which is serving all channels and if you have the avaya omni channel like ocean or any any of the avaya omni channel platform it really becomes really omni channel truly omni channel the front end channels if they're also omni channel and the agent desktop will be managing all these channels from a centralized you know agent desktop and maybe it will be routing to IVR as well as other digital channels. And at the core, the automation channel is also, there's one single center integrating the backend and integrating with all those channels. It becomes uniquely omni-channel. And it's very easy to expand to new channels. Let me just quickly, I, I was not, I mean, let me just spontaneously show you a very quick short thing. I mean, it's not a demo, but, but here, for example. Uh, for example, this is a scenario okay uh for spare part ordering okay this is the whatsapp channel so you come here and say i need a car spare part and the system tells you please give us the vehicle identification number or alternatively write down car's brand name model and year or you can also send us a picture of your license card and you send this picture here and this is uh, analyzed with a third party ai tool this is Microsoft Cognitive Services, by the way, and it extracts this number through OCR technology, and then it asks you which spare part you want. You say, I don't know the name. You say, okay, sends the parts picture, and then you send this braking pad picture, and now it makes image processing, and it extracts the label, which is braking pad, and then it gives you the information. The price of braking pad for Nissan, blah, blah, is $250.
And then some some point here. Thank you. You can say thank you. Okay. And it says you're almost welcome. And now this is the Arabic version. And now you can make it fully conversational as well. So she, she starts speaking. So what, what is this? This is actually what we call the omnichannel multimodal experience. Multimodal means you can interact with the system with any from any modality. It can be voice. Like you've seen that on WhatsApp, you can just record your voice and it will understand you. Text or image. The question is, if you have, for example, the chatbot, but tomorrow you want to have a speech-enabled chatbot. You want to say, uh, hey, uh, for example, BB is a banking application, like a city for a bank. This is one of our big projects for the last year. You want to say, hey, BB, and you want to start doing transactions. Or you want to do the same service on the IVR. Then you need that. So it was a long introduction, but just to sum it, sum it up, we are not a chatbot company. We are not a conversational IVR company either. So we are a conversational AI company, which is omnichannel, multimodal, multilingual. And I also say AI rich. Why do I say AI rich? Because uh, let me just, if I have it here, let me just fast forward here. There is one a diagram here. I know I'm getting a bit now technical, but uh, unfortunately, this, this again, the selling aspect is a bit technical. Uh, you see, this is the Sestec box. And these are some of the AI components that you can utilize. We, we, we partner with Microsoft, so that's why we prefer working with their cognitive services. But for example, OCR, image processing, some symptom analysis, language processing, personalization, data analytics. So you can utilize this or you can utilize other stuff as well. But this platform, the orchestration layer, have integ integrations with these type of third-party AIs. And our stack is also rich. Why? We have TTS. We have speech text, we have NLP, and we also have voice biometrics. So honestly, Avaya Sestec together with some like maybe Microsoft and some other AI components can provide an end-to-end -end, omnichannel multimodal AI rich experience. So this is the big value add. So this is, this is the big offering that we have for our customers. Okay, so I will summarize the why Sestec conversation I part here and then I'll stop if you have any questions and I'll, I'll continue there after that one. So first of all, the omnichannel orchestration is a big differentiator. Second, which is also part, also part of the first one, we have speech enablement components like TTS, speech text, and biometrics. So today you have the chatbot, tomorrow you want to have the same on the IVR, then you can just introduce TTS and speech text and voice biometrics, and you can even do the authentication. We have extended AI platform, so we can also integrate the third-party AI tools for an, like a really multimodal type of experience. Embedded into contact center platform. This is very important. I mean, uh, having the front end integrations with the Avaya live chat and the uh, Avaya IVR, MRCP integrations, REST integrations, this is a big value add. And one of the examples of this is, for example, while you're chatting with the bot, at a certain point, there is a fallback management. For example, when you say something and the bot doesn't understand that, when there is no match, you should be able to route that conversation to the agent together with the chat history, right? So these type of integration is very important that you already have done that, you have the, you have the uh, adapters for that, and you are putting it in front of the customer. That's very important. Uh, we have the concept of blended AI, man-machine collaboration. I, I'm planning to show you an example of that because this is really important. But just to give, maybe uh, I can show you a quick example of that now. Um, okay, let me try it. Okay. For example, I'd like to learn my balance. I think it's timed out one second. Yeah. Okay. So when I say I'd like to learn my balance, it gives me a response, right? Tell me uh, latest transactions. Okay. So this tool, this tool is here. What we call the hybrid agent tool, okay? Hybrid agent. So when you say, okay, when you say final go, you think about that. I think the guy tries to say final transactions. I mean, of course, it doesn't make sense at all. But now look at it. You see, when I say, tell me my latest transactions. It gives you this response. When you say final go, let's say you're trying to say 
final go, actually you meant latest transaction. Let's say you just learned English a couple of weeks ago and you don't know how to say, you don't know how to say last, you don't know how to say transaction, and you're just trying to say my final, you know, things I've done finally. And you're trying to say, you, this is the only word you know. So I'm giving you an extreme example, okay? But still, as you could see, the system gave the right response. Why? Because this tool here, called the hybrid agent tool, whenever there is no match, sorry, let me take it here, okay. Whenever there is no match, whenever the system doesn't know what to say, it pops up here. And then you can make a human selection. And when you say, okay, then you can continue uh, my standing orders, please. You have one standing order because you see, actually, I'm not handing over because handing over is like one of the ways of managing holdback. I'm not handing over to the agent because if I hand it over to the agent, the rest of the conversation should be continuing with the agent. But I lost the efficiency there because the only part the system didn't understand was the final go thing. But once I in make an inter intervention there, the remaining part of the conversation will continue with the bot. Plus, plus what happens here is actually, uh, look, when I take a report, look, when I say final go, initially there was no match. And then it was changed by a supervisor through the hybrid agent module. And now I am tagging it as latest transaction. What is this? I have the input. I have the output. Now you can use it to enhance your model. So you're doing supervised learning with these type of labelings. This is the input, this is the output, and you can use different methods to introduce that concept to the system. So now I'm, I know I'm getting a bit technical, but these are really the differentiators. And when you say we have blended AI and man machine collaboration, it might sound like a buzzword, but when you show it to the customer, they really like it because these tools really work. I mean, they are really, really, really useful. Best localization is one of the things that we always emphasize a lot, and I'm sure you, you observed that one as well. One of the key things I do is I always show an Arabic, uh, you know, uh, demo, like I say, Tahbilun Nakhti ila Ahmed, you know, the lady says, Kamal uh, Mabla, you say, Miat uh, Dollar, and they know that I'm not a native Arabic speaker and they like it somehow, you know, I'm using these tricks, but of course you cannot do these tricks, as you know, Arabic already. So, uh, but emphasizing localization, sometimes I show them something in Urdu, many Abha Kar forum, for example. I mean, I know that they're not interested in Urdu. But the fact that I show them we can even do Urdu and Hindi and, you know, uh, you know, these type of local languages, they really enjoy that. Now that we are doing projects in India, for example, Avaya India, uh, of course, they are asking about, uh, you know, Hindi, Bengali, these type of languages. But for, for the Gulf region, at least, it's good that they understand that they, you can really do localization. Analytics and reporting is also quite important. Uh, we try to show them, you know, the nice reports that we have, like these type of stuff as well as uh, the, the, the analytics tool that we have, we can also use it for automation. So the analytics also can be uh, used to query the automated conversation like we do it uh, in the you know, good old speech analytics. You can now do AI analytics. So we are also showing these type of functionalities. And in the new version, we also have Tableau integration and they have, it has fancy reports here and there. But you know, it's always good to mention a bit of these reports, especially for the more like expert audience when you have, they want to always see things like that. And of course, cloud and on-prem options you have, it's good to highlight that one as well, especially they're mostly asking, if they're asking for this, most probably they're either a bank or a telco or a government entity and they want to go on-prem. And as most of the vendors in the market are cloud, it differentiates you. But you, you don't say we, don't, we are not cloud. We can do cloud or an on-prem. And uh, last but not least, the design know-how. So I'll stop here a bit. But I use this design know-how thing a lot to give confidence to the customers. So uh, do you have any questions for this part or shall, shall I continue with the next slide? I mean, is there anything you want to highlight here or ask about the, these differentiators? You want to add anything here? Mm -hmm. Team, anybody on the call has any questions to Ahmad? Especially around the differentiators. So, any comments, any feedbacks, any uh, feedbacks let, about let, expectations? Want, from Ahmed, we, can, we can leave the uh, QA for the last five minutes of the call. We'll sure. go into detail. Yeah. Okay, no problem. Let, let's do that. Let, let me summarize in eight minutes. Let me leave 10 minutes for you guys, okay? Okay. 
So after this type of slides, when, when I try to make a clear idea about why Sestec differentiates, uh, I leave this design know-how thing to the end. Because this is where I build the trust, I feel. For example, when I say, look, this is the technology, whatever I told you is about the technology and it's nice, good, but it's more about, I mean, it's not only about technology, it's also about how you deploy that technology, how you bring your know-how to the table, how you guide the customers. I have one customer now, they, we started the project and they want to do some, you know, integrations and he's telling Ahmed, tell me what to do, Jan. don't ask me, you can do this and that, you know, just because you know this tool, right? This is your expertise area. Just guide us how to do it, right? Especially when it comes to new technologies like conversation AI, the requirement is more than usual. I mean, it's not like you're not selling CRM. Everyone knows what CRM is. Uh, but when it comes to these type of stuff, it's always good to give a good sense of, you know the stuff, you know how to design it, you have done this before. And of course, it's good to also, some customers will come to you and say, show me your references, blah, blah. It's always good to show the best examples. Sometimes I show them YouTube videos and show them, you know, some good examples. And I'm doing comparisons. I'm sometimes criticizing my own customers saying, look, this guy, they have implemented this, we have implemented this. I think it would be better if you did it that way, this way. So I'm using these type of things. It's always good to do that. And after this stage, I am spending at least two, three minutes here. Look, there are six dimensions of design that will make a good, that will differentiate a good project from a better project. First, design of the dialogue based on a communication strategy. Uh, you don't, you no more have an IVR. In the IVR, you're just speaking the name of service. For blah, blah, press one. For blah, blah, press two. You no more use that type of uh, plain language. You're speaking with people. What's your communication strategy? You want to be friendly? You want to be formal? You want to have jokes? You want to be straightforward? You want to have longer sentences? How are you going to formulate that? Uh, this is this requires a different type of mindset. It's about like you know, uh, it's more like about uh, how to speak nicely, how to speak the right words. Uh, you should have a communication strategy. And when I say communication strategy, it's also about personalization of the dialogue. If I know that my customer is, is Egyptian, maybe you're going to say Zayek, or if he's from uh, Syria, I don't know. You say Kefek, I don't know. So Shlonek, uh, the I mean. Making these type of differentiations is related to the communication strategy. Maybe you can just say, okay, I have one persona, I'm speaking the same way with everyone. That's your decision. So I'm, I'm giving examples so that they understand that it's, 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 this type of expression has, has a substance in it, not just you know, wording here. Design of the backend integrations. When we do a project, the, the first things that people integrate with is like their banking backend systems, their CRM standard, but actually the backend is so rich. Weather.com is your backend. Any type of open source uh, database is your backend. For example, if you want to say, hi, it's such a lovely weather, isn't it? How can I help you? If you want to say, it's such a lovely weather, isn't it? You have to go to weather.com, get the weather data, and interpret it with a simple rule, and then you should change your prompt accordingly. This is your backend. You're, you don't realize maybe, but it's your backend as well. And even within your company, maybe you have three backends, which will enrich your conversations. But uh, the, the first, uh, reaction of the customers is selecting the most simple backend integrations and they don't think about you know what else I can do what else I can do to make the conversation more enriching this is uh, by the way honestly speaking when I tell all these type of nice design aspects the budget and these aspects I mean the, the more you spend time on the design of course there should be a budget around that and most of the cases your customer will come to you with an immediate agenda I need this you know I need something functional I need something simple but for some customers, at least, it's good for them to know, look, I will start with something, maybe it will be simple, but I have a vision. I can enhance it, you know, because uh, people are used to the idea that, you know, this is AI, but it will get better. So you can always play with that. Uh, design of the integration with the customer engagement platform, the embeddedness. So one of the things that, I mean, uh, inshallah, when we do more projects with Avaya, we started doing good projects, but we, we will have more and more projects. Our embeddedness will grow by time. So we will say we have done this project. This is the, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, you know, this is EICC. This is Oceana. This is this. Having all these type of embeddedness is really increasing the value of the projects. Design of the audiovisual interface. How are you going to use the images? How are you going to design the buttons? If you have speech enabled design, how are you going to? I mean, how many times will you ask the same question before you fall back? Do fallback management. These are about the audiovisual interface. 
especially if it's an omnichannel project. Of course, you have images, all type of images. You know, will you be able to send pictures? These are part of this part. Fallback management and hybrid engagement design. This is very, very important because this is one of the biggest pain points of the customer. What if the system doesn't understand my customer? What's going to happen? We always say, look, there is no way the system will get, get you stuck. There will always be a fallback management. You will, able to, you, you will either be get routed or the system will ask you uh, a, a rephrasing of the question or it will show you options for, so that you select or you will have the man machine collaboration that uh, the tool that I just showed you. Uh, and uh, the customer will always get served. This is all, always good to emphasize. And design of the expanded AI components. If the customer comes to you saying, oh, do you have image processing? Do you have this and this? Yes, I have them. Look, this is the way I designed this. This is my demo. This is this, this is that. So this is really helping to build that trust in the customer so that they know that these guys know what they're doing. They offer me a vision. It's a long-term vision. Okay, uh, these are some of the return on investment calculations. I mean, automation is straightforward. The more you automate, the, the more they will save. And it's very straightforward. I'll, I'll share this presentation with you guys so you can just take a look at that and you can ask me questions if you have any. But we have different calculators, some of which are more sophisticated. But this is a simple one, but quite true. And I already gave you an example from my customers where they save 15 agents per month. And you can calculate the Dubai conditions, how much they're saving out. OK, so the second group of solutions is vo conversational biometrics. Honestly, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because it's very straightforward. This is for authenticating the customers via their voice. There is the active and the passive versions of this. The active is my voice, my password thing, the explicit authentication. The passive one is, is a background process. You do your good old authentications in the, in the front end. Uh, front line, but in the background, it's making another layer of security check by comparing the current speech of the customer with the previous recordings. Uh, you need to do integration with the, you know, ACD because the call will be streamed. It's a bit more complicated to deploy the verification on the go. Uh, we have done this with a couple of banks in Kuwait, and they are using as a fraud detection tool. Verification on the go or passive authentication is not used for explicit authentication because you cannot tell the customer, please speak for a couple of seconds and I will authenticate you. It's much better to use vocal passphrase or active authentication, which is basically my voice, my password. And guys, one of the things I want to tell you, most of the requirements will come around conversation AI. And we can really use conversational biometrics to differentiate. As we are doing in one of the uh, AVSSTEC uh, RFPs, we have told the guys, look, if you work with us for conversational IVR, then we are going to replace your 400 million voice print licenses and make it 6 million uh, with a very small budget. So we are using it as a way of negotiation. Of course, if the budget is big enough and we have that space for negotiation. And they really like the idea because then they start calculating how much they pay for the support level and it becomes very advantageous for them. So I, I tried this a couple of times for big deals, very big deals, by the way. Uh, and it really works. So uh, you can think of this as a flexibility. Uh, one of the key things about voice biometrics is, I, I think I'm coming to the end of my slides. There is also a technical aspect of voice biometrics. I'm not going to get into that. But if someone asks you, look, is this safe? You should make a very good response to that. And one of the ways to explain that this is safe is that there is a technical point. It's about thresholds. Voice biometrics is not about you pass or you don't pass. This is about probability. How you're going to interpret that probability and how you're going to design your multi-factor authentication depending on the customer. If it's a bank, do it differently. If it's a telco, suggest something else. And there are ways to play with that threshold to increase risks of false acceptance and false rejection and optimize these two parameters so that you always find a very good uh, fit for the customer. And most of the complaints around voice biometrics, if you hear about them, none of them are about us. Uh, when I examine them, most of them are about design aspects. They either went to the customer and said, look, this is single factor authentication. You don't need anything else. Just use voice memories. This is not true. You don't, you shouldn't do that. We have more than 20 banks. I, I, I mean, in my region, we have uh, three banks using this technology. They're quite happy because we have given them the right picture of how to use this technology. It's part of the multi-factor authentication. We try to understand. Are you after having an additional layer of security or are you trying to simplify the current security measures? What is the balance for you? So this is the risk, this is the balance, and you come up with the right design. You can always engage me and our pre-sales team to explain these things slowly, 
giving examples. This is bank A, this is their design, this is their requirement, this is bank B. If you do it that way, you will see most of the banks will be interested in that. But if you don't do that, security guys are the biggest risk because they will have a lot of question marks around that. They will be they, they, they will fear from this tool and they, they will run away. But again, um, Dubai Islamic Bank is using it, two banks from Kuwait is using that. Uh, Alpha Telecom uh, has been using that uh, for a limited number of customers. We have no issues and many, many others in, in, in other regions as well. But this part, just to sum up, I'm ending my presentation here. Voice biometrics is a very good add-on. Coming back to this slide. Uh, yeah, let me, let, let me just show, show you this slide again. Yeah, so we present voice biometrics as part of the same suite as a functionality. So this gives them a good confidence. Okay, this is part of the same suite and it will be part of the same design. So if you give them the right understanding of design, like our design strategy for conversation IVR, you will see that the customer's confidence will be very high. And my kind of suggestion would be, if you get, you're getting requirements around voice biometrics in your region, don't hesitate asking me all these details and join me in the meetings and uh, with me and my pre-sales team will give you the best picture possible. So I'm done uh, with my presentation. So again, thank you very much for, for this webinar, for this opportunity. Automate, authorize and analyze automation, efficiency, consistency, good design, and hopefully good money. So thank you guys. Um, please to ask your questions. Thank you, Ahmad. Uh, amazing presentation. I think you take, uh, you take the contact center to a complete different level. You know, you move, we so. move away with, with Sysstack from, you know, the voice only discussion to how we can enhance customer experience, reduce your customer waiting time, uh, you know, tackle different channels in different ways. So today, a lot of customers are exploiting, uh, are exploring WhatsApp, they're exploring chatbots, but you take the discussion to a new level. So that's a big advantage. Um, I just have a question. Um, do sure. you do any uh, sentiment analysis? Very good question, Eli. Thank you for this. Actually, this clarifies one of the Key points I try to emphasize here, this question is directly related to that. Um, this is a very high level, almost non-technical uh, architecture. Sentiment analysis is here, actually. This is sentiment analysis. Actually, I can show it to you. But uh, when you say sentiment analysis, we have the, oops, sorry, what is this? Uh, when you say sentiment analysis, we have different tools for that. And uh, let me show you one of them. Uh, for example, here, when you say, show me your offers, please, it gives you three options. And you're saying, not bad. And this is the response the system gives you. All right, do you want to see specials offered for you? And then the same scenario, your offers, please. You say, these are awful. <coughs> now the scenario changes. Excuse me for the inconvenience. Maybe it will be better if you build your own bundle. So what changes this scenario is, when you say, after this scenario, there is a script. It tells that, look, whatever response this offer gets, send it to the sentiment analysis algorithm, okay? Let me close this one. So it is sent here. And this AI tool, the third party AI tool, tells us that this sentiment is negative, uh, positive, neutral. By the way, you don't have to use Microsoft. You can use open source algorithms. We have our own sentiment analysis algorithm. And that information is sent back to the orchestration layer, and orchestration layer changes the dialogue according to that. That's why when you imagine something, for example, like sentiment analysis, you can think by default that we have it because in the end, it's a matter of integration. Do we have it as a technology? Yes, we have it, but there are so many alternatives. Actually, what we do is we do voice analysis to understand your sentiment, your anger, but it has to be a voice channel. But sentiment analysis per se is a text-based algorithm. It looks at the text itself, but when you say, for example, not bad on the voice channels, we're, first we convert it to text. And then using a sentiment analysis algorithm, we generate a sentiment score. And based on that, you can change, steer your dialogue accordingly. But I want to give you a generic response. Whatever AI component relevant to AI, you can think about. For example, you could have asked me, Ahmed, can you process image? I would say, no, we, we, we don't have, yes, we can process image definitely, but we don't have to have our own image processing algorithm. We integrate with third party. But the strength of our platform is our SS tech. It orchestrates very strongly with anything. I mean, it's like a 
unique centralized platform which can help you about these type of expansions. Great, thank you, Ahmad. I'll leave. Uh... Sam, you're very quiet. You're usually uh, uh, usually have a lot of questions. Sam is there? <laughs> yes, but uh, it's a new technology, so I need to read uh, more about it. But it's a good presentation. Okay. Don't uh, worry, I will send to... you the presentation and the uh, supplementary documentation as well. If you need anything else, just. Uh, uh, we have some joint uh, presentations with Hawaii as well. So we have a good yeah. stack of uh, yeah, so collaterals. Yes, yes yeah. I will share it after this meeting, no worries. Uh, Ahmed, can, can you speak about, uh, can you tell us more about uh, the accuracy of your uh, solution, the fine tuning process? Uh, sure. Um, you know, uh, what kind of security concerns you tackle with your solutions? You know, mm -hmm. uh, these things, the, you know, the major uh, points, maybe what kind of uh, uh, customers you, what kind of customers are the sweet spot for you, for Sestec solutions today? Mm -hmm. Where do you put perfectly? Uh, you know, a lot of the, we were seeing a lot of shift in you know, authentication and voice biometrics called seeding uh, and, you know, uh, voice driven IVRs. Uh, today moving from you know optional to mandate so which type of customers do you feel are you know the sweet spots for Sistec solutions today okay thanks thanks for and this, maybe uh, can you yeah. share a few references around the region yes mm -hmm. the, the, yeah very good very, very good uh, uh, um, very good point uh, Eli. thanks a lot yeah exactly let's do that let's do that uh, first of all if you're just making lists, I would rather say banks, telcos, and government entities. Um, it's the same in the region as well, in my region as well. So we have government entities like Smart Dubai Government, we have Dubai Islamic Bank. But uh, again, like, honestly, we are not restricted to this. When I start thinking about any vertical, um, there is always a customer engagement aspect of it, right? So if you're thinking about food ordering, Yes, you do, you do food ordering over the phone and you can do the automation. Um, for small entities, you can do IT help desk. And also it really changes from region to region. For example, with Avaya India, the most frequent requirement we're receiving is about IT help desk because they are giving global service to many enterprise customers for IT help desk. That's why I think we, get, we are getting POs from them. I think we have five POs or something. All about password reset, IT app desk, these type of things. But coming to Gulf region, banks, I mean, nowadays, like it's all about banks, telcos are starting. You know, Safaricom, we are dealing with it together, Equity Bank with Avaya, uh, First Bank Nigeria, today we have a meeting with them. Uh, Bank of Maldives, again, came through you guys. There are many others, yeah, I mean, Emirates MBD was like, uh, you know, the, you previously tried it at least, so this, this is uh, part of the same concept. So more and more banks will be introduced into this realm. And when I look at my uh, references, it's not just about, I mean, chat posts, for example, we have this example of VB. I, I think you should look, have a look at that. I mean, this VB is a virtual assistant that can handle more than 300 banking transactions and a lot of out of scope conversations, chit chat. Uh, this is more like, you know, you can see a big advertisement around that, millions of dollars paid to some actors, blah, blah. They made a big noise out of that. One of the good things, guys, I mean, in, in the Gulf region especially, we have certain countries which like leading technology and they have money as well, but still because they don't see those exciting examples around them, uh, we still need some courage on their side. But it started already with chatbots especially. You, you also have other projects as well. But I think we should take it to the next level, try to find good examples of like virtual assistant, try to, I mean, find the right leaders for that. And this will be a big, big pie for us. I mean, it's a big, big, big uh market for us because i'm getting this input from other regions i feel still in the gulf we have a big way to go to cover that market so to make the long story short banks we should you know get as many banks as possible telcos should be there definitely i don't understand still why you know for example etisalat doesn't have or like i, I don't know do doesn't have a conversational idea yet 
or they they were inquiring about voice biometrics years ago. I don't know why they still didn't deploy that with us or with someone else. But that's something that we we need to break. I mean, this 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 concept should change because um, we already proven the concept actually. So they're already trying that, and we got that feedback from our new engagement. So they said, "Oh, I tried this. That's good. I tried that. That's good." So when when they start trying that and that's good step, it means now we are passing this first comers. You know, it's it's going more up to the technology adoption curve, and I think we're at that point now. Telcos, banks, airlines. BPOs, government entities, they're all big potential for us. Uh, we are doing project, project with Avaya with Minister of Interior. Uh, we have another project with Abu Dhabi Digital Authority. I mean, these government entities are also doing that. Smart Dubai government is a customer for us. And honestly, uh, I wouldn't restrict myself with anything. I mean, if the customer is interested in automation efficiency and they don't want to compromise experience, which, mean, uh, which means they have a reasonable budget, I think this, is, this should be our target customers. But let me send you the, the case study documentation. You can have a look at that. Uh, we have some uh, return investment calculation. This is our SS tech uh, project from the region. And uh, maybe we can have further discussions around that. And coming back to the accuracy question, um, for example, there are different layers of accuracy. One of which is, for example, for the conversation IVR, the uh, measure of accuracy is accurate call routing. Accurate intent recognition is also called accurate intent recognition. When you say something, what is the accuracy it will understand you? And for English and Arabic, it's above 90%. The commitment of, for example, one of our big competitors is 85%. And this commitment was part of the Zane Group deal, which was frozen now because of the pandemic. But I hope it will continue. This is our ISS tech Metco engagement. Um, the, the official uh, committed target for our uh, biggest competitor was 85%. We could commit to 88 or 90. But of course, yeah, we don't prefer giving too high co commitments, but we target that. So our standard expectations above 90. And for the remaining part, we manage it. It's never like there is no getting stuck. I mean, you will hear these type of stories. I called this IVR, you know, conversation IVR, I got stuck in it. It means that there's a design problem. We can also have it, but it should be the first I mean, it should be managed very smartly. You should be managed during the soft launch period because there's a very simple way of fixing those things. But whatever project we do, the UAT already proves and the, smart, uh, the soft launch already proves that the accuracy is good enough. We don't launch anything without, without, before the accuracy is good enough. This is for conversation live yet. For chatbot, obviously, you can expect higher accuracies because it's purely text-based. For voice biometrics, I would rather keep that discussion to a different session because the accuracy, I mean, even, I mean, th there's a term called equal error rate for voice biometrics. And we say we can target less than 5% equal error rate. That was the KPI for Touch Telecom. We have done this deal with Zane Group and we passed that KPI and they, uh, you know, they made our payment. That was the first project. So we, we made a conditional PO agreement and then uh, they started using the system. But actually, if you're working with a bank by playing with the threshold, you can minimize the risk of false acceptance to less than one in a thousand. But it will increase the risk of false rejection. It means the system might reject you, although you are the right person. But it doesn't mean that it, you will just say, my voice, my password. Just imagine your threshold. I mean, your, you couldn't pass the threshold because the threshold is too high. At that point, the system will ask you, what's your birth date? You will say 1981. Then you will pass. Or you will, the system will ask you to tip in. So let's say you will compromise 5% of the calls as two-factor authentication, but the remaining 95% will be highly, highly accurate. That's why I'm, I'm not going to go into that details, but there is a, and give me one hour session. I'll explain you what I mean by like the accuracies in voice biometrics, how we play with that, so that the overall multi-factor authentication becomes very, very convincing, such that we have so many banks working with us for so many years. But without having that information, you want to do selling, yeah. The, the security uh, guy will ask you that question and the uh, communication will stop there. Sorry. Okay, perfect. Ahmad, uh, yeah. I want to thank you for your time and uh, for the very nice presentation. I'm sure the team will be reaching out to you and uh, hopefully we'll have uh, more customers exposed to all of your incredible uh, solutions. Um, uh, if you can share with me any, you know, uh, presentation or any document, uh, we will forward it to the team for review and for the people who registered. And we will be also sharing the recording 
uh, with the full team and your team as well, just for future reference. Uh, we're a bit, we stretched on time. <laughs> yes. We're seven yes. minutes behind schedule. So I really want to thank you and thank everybody for joining. <laughs> oh, good luck. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, such a pleasure. Uh, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. I want to meet all of you guys. I know some names. I, I haven't met you personally. Please, uh, let's let's come together and let's uh, do business together. Okay, guys? Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for inviting me. Thank you, Ahmed. Thank you, everyone. Okay, bye thank bye. you, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you.